In this video, we will go over important information about how the PCV program works and guidelines for conducting yourself in the field as a representative of Native Plant Trust. We are grateful to have so many dedicated conservationists in the Plant Conservation Volunteer Program. The work of our volunteers today will contribute to conservation efforts 50 years from now. Monitoring how rare plant populations are doing on the landscape helps us to better understand how to protect them now and in the future. We are a community science program, and I believe we are the first, if not one of the first, rare plant monitoring programs started in the United States. The mission of the New England Plant Conservation Volunteer Program is to engage interested volunteers in activities that promote the conservation of New England's native flora and habitats with an emphasis on rare plant species protection. PCV program activities include rare plant monitoring, habitat management, invasive species management, and botanical inventories. The main focus of our program and the primary duty of our volunteers is rare plant monitoring. Each year, PCVs complete hundreds of rare plant surveys, providing data that is crucial for informing policy and management decisions at the regional, state, and federal levels. We follow strict guidelines and protocols for rare plant monitoring. This is because we have data security agreements with each state's natural heritage program to ensure the plants and locations are protected. Remember that we work closely with each state's natural heritage program and want to help protect the locations of these rare plants from harm. How rare is rare? Let's look at Northern Blazing Star, Leichus nova angliae, as an example to explain how we determine the rarity of a species in New England. We use the rarity ranking system of NatureServe, and you can find a more detailed explanation on their website of how they determine rarity. In brief, species status is assessed and documented at three distinct geographic scales, global, G, national, N, and state slash province, S. Conservation status ranks are based on a scale of one to five, ranging from critically imperiled, one, to demonstrably secure, five. For Northern Blazing Star, its global status, or G status, is G5 question mark, which means this species is secure, common, widespread, and abundant. However, the question mark denotes an inexact numeric rank, meaning we are not sure if it is secure, or if it should be re-ranked as 4, apparently secure, vulnerable, imperiled, or critically imperiled, or lower. If you look at the state slash province status, you can see it varies widely from S3 in Massachusetts, meaning it is vulnerable in the state slash province due to a restricted range, relatively few populations, often 80 or fewer, recent and widespread declines, or other factors making it vulnerable to extirpation, and also to SH in New Jersey, meaning the species is possibly extirpated, it occurred historically in the state slash province, and there is some possibility that it may be rediscovered in the future. We list Northern Blazing Star as a regionally rare species in Flora Conservanda because if you look at the states it is found in and their state ranks, you will notice it is really only found in New England states, and based on recent PCV surveys, we think it is declining in New England. You can learn more about any species' conservation status by searching for them on the NatureServe website. Another activity that PCVs are often involved in is managing populations and habitats. These opportunities are largely dependent on what rare plant populations are in need of management and what sort of management projects we decide to engage in. Most management work done with volunteers involves habitat improvements and invasive species removal. While assisting in an ongoing management project, one of our PCVs said, every day I get outside with a purpose. As I just mentioned, invasive species removal is a large part of the management work we occasionally ask volunteers to help us with. We also have volunteers assist in managing areas around rare plant occurrences, and we hope to do more management work in the future to help protect them in situ from threats mentioned in the last video. We also include volunteers on botanical inventories when the opportunity arises. Sometimes our annual field trips include a botanical inventory. Sometimes our projects include one as well. They are always a good time and a great way to learn how to identify plants in the field with a group of other like-minded, enthusiastic plant nerds. 
As I mentioned in the last slide, every year we offer free botanical field trips for our PCVs throughout New England. Our PCV field trips are a way for us to thank you for all the hard work you do. We tend to go to a botanically interesting spot where either rare plants are or unique compositions of plants are to be found. Field trips are led by a botanical expert or someone who can teach plant identification or ecology of a particular area. These field trips are popular and can fill up quickly, so make sure to sign up when the opportunities are announced. Finally, we try to offer educational opportunities to our PCVs when we can get an expert to teach a class or give a webinar. Classes have ranged from identification of a specific group of plants, such as goldenrods or solidago, shown in these photos, to field identification trips. We also provide multiple free webinars to PCVs each year that cover interesting topics, such as learning about different plant communities. Now, let's go over the PCV survey cycle to give you a better idea of what happens in a year from survey assignments to database updates. In early spring, we have volunteers sign up for surveys they are interested in attempting. At the training sessions in March, we will go over exactly how to determine which surveys to sign up for. Survey information is not given to volunteers just yet, because next, Native Plant Trust staff and interns work from April through October to secure permits and permissions from landowners so that PCVs can enter their property to complete their surveys. Once permission is secured, volunteers will receive a notification that their survey assignment is ready and their survey materials are now available to them on the Sprout website. Volunteers on the same survey are expected to coordinate with each other to determine a date and time to complete the survey. Once a survey is completed, we ask volunteers to submit their New England Rare Plant reporting forms to us by uploading survey data, photos, and maps through the Field Form Enter page on the Sprout website. Field forms should be submitted as soon as a survey is completed to ensure accuracy of data. Wait too long and you might forget what you did. At the very latest, we ask volunteers to submit their field forms by early November. Native Plant Trust staff then work during the winter to process the data and determine the next set of surveys for the following field season. We will go over details of each step in a little more depth in the next video. Now, we will go over the PCV guidelines for conducting rare plant surveys. You can also find this information in the PCV handbook you will receive at the PCV training session. All data and information about rare plants is to be kept strictly confidential. Many rare species sites are extremely fragile and can deteriorate from frequent visitation. At other sites, the rare species may be vulnerable to collection. In addition, about 75% of rare species sites occur on private property, which may not be visited unless permission is specifically obtained. Any information on rare plant occurrences or habitat management sites must be kept strictly confidential. Species locations should not be discussed with anyone other than staff members of Native Plant Trust's Conservation Department. Landowner permission must be secured before a site is visited. You must have either written or verbal permission from Native Plant Trust prior to visiting any rare plant sites you are assigned. At times, landowner permission is difficult to obtain and may take longer than anticipated. If you become anxious about the status of permission at any of your sites, please contact the botanical coordinator. This rule also applies to public lands, including state parks, forests, and wildlife management areas. In these instances, we are not necessarily seeking permission, but notifying natural area managers of your visit. You may also have extra steps that need to be completed before you can access a site. These will be listed on your assignment sheet and may include coordinating with a landowner or manager to let them know when you are coming or have them join your survey, gain access to a site, or avoid certain days or times when other activities are happening on a site, such as repairs to other parts of the property. It is incredibly important that you follow all of these instructions before conducting your survey to maintain good relationships with the landowners. In general, Conservation Department staff will obtain all landowner permissions. Unless otherwise requested, volunteers should not contact landowners to seek permission for a site visit. It helps us keep track of the status of assignments if we obtain permission and often proves less confusing to the landowner. 
Volunteers sometimes form personal relationships with landowners and can ask Native Plant Trust if they can contact the landowner independently to secure permission. Always notify conservation staff if this is the case and make sure you have our approval before contacting the landowners. Only PCVs are allowed to participate in rare plant surveys. Please do not bring anyone outside of the PCV program to any of your assigned sites. It is important at many of these sites that their locations remain confidential. May you bring your husband, wife, children? Exceptions are possible, especially with safety in mind, but always contact the botanical coordinator for permission prior to bringing anyone with you. If we allow an exception, all non-PCBs are required to sign a data security agreement before going out into the field. Always submit a New England rare plant reporting form whether you find a population or not. Sometimes you will show up to a site and find a field of your target rare plant species right in front of you and can easily conduct your survey. Sometimes you will get to a site and end up not finding the rare species you came to look for that day. If we work to secure permission and send you an assignment, please submit a survey report whether or not you found the plant, or let us know if you were unable to complete the survey. Submitting your New England rare plant reporting form soon after your visit allows for a better recollection of your visit and allows us to spread out our data processing work. Sometimes not finding the plants you are looking for is almost as valuable as finding them. No data is still good data. Since future surveys and the status of a population is determined based on your finding or not finding it, a map of the search area is essential. Always report the search date, good directions to the survey site, and a description of the area you have searched. Whether you find the occurrence or not, the information you provide can be incredibly important for future surveys. No rare plant material collection should be made unless you have specific instructions to do so. One thing we need to address is that some of our rare plant species have medicinal values or are of value to plant collectors, especially orchids. As a PCV, you are representing NEPCOP and Native Plant Trust and our mission is to protect native species. Needless to say, no rare plant material should be removed on your survey unless we specifically instruct you to do so. If you happen to find an excellent blueberry patch on your survey, field snacks are not to worry, but be aware that there are laws in place for foraging and picking common plants, and certain states are much stricter than others. Often, you may visit a rare plant species when they are in seed or fruit. If your assignment has instructions to collect a sample of seed, that means we have the permits and permissions to in place for you to do so. Please do not collect seeds unless specifically instructed to do so in the survey assignment. If you are unsure, contact the botanical coordinator. Some plants are difficult to identify with the type of manuals you can carry in the field. If you think that all or a portion of the plants should be collected in order to verify ID, obtain permission from us well in advance so that a collection permit can be obtained. Permits must be obtained for collecting any portion of rare species in many states and on federally owned properties. If you are unsure of the identification of a species, diagnostic photos are often just as good as a press specimen and a lot easier to share. Always conduct yourself in a professional manner. Sometimes field days are hot, buggy, and muddy. Not always a walk in the park. Maybe you forgot your lunch and the mosquitoes just won't leave you alone. We've all been there and we have all gotten through it. Remember that while in the field surveying rare plants, you are representing both Native Plant Trust and the Natural Heritage Programs. As a representative of these organizations, your conduct in the field is held to a higher standard than as a private citizen. Please treat all landowners and their properties with care. Even difficult or unfriendly property owners should be treated in a professional and respectful manner. If a property owner who has previously given their permission changes their mind when you get there and asks you to leave, please respect their request. As frustrating as it is, it is better to leave than to argue with them and jeopardize future surveys to the site. Sometimes you will have houses nearby or hikers using nearby trails who are curious as to what you are doing. If you find yourself in an uncomfortable or difficult situation, please do not feel that you need to stay. Leave and do not hesitate to contact anyone in the conservation department. 
Please submit your New England Rare Plant Reporting Form data, maps, and photos. Please submit your field forms by uploading your data, photos, and maps using the Field Form Enter page on the Sprout website. Please also be sure to include the original copies of photos you took in the field so we are able to zoom in if needed for identification. This data is the bottom line of the work we do. Without documentation, our work in the field is of little value. From a program perspective, if we don't receive your survey reports, it means that PCVs will have to return to the same site in later years because we have no record of what was found previously. The scheduling of next year's surveys is done in January, after the previous year's data has been reviewed. If we don't have your results until February, it means that the survey has likely already been reviewed, reassigned, entered into the database, and possibly put on a different year's signups. All of this is done at a very busy time of year and at a time when there are no interns to help us do the work. Please submit your New England Rare Plant reporting forms in a timely manner. If for some reason you cannot submit the form shortly after your survey, please submit them as soon as you can. We really need that information to keep our program running and to best conserve rare plants in New England. A few safety tips to keep in mind while completing surveys as a PCV. Be aware of ticks and mosquitoes as they can carry unwanted illnesses. Wear insect repellent and light colored clothing. It's easier to spot ticks. Long pants, long sleeved shirts, and a hat to prevent ticks from sneaking up on you. Pull your socks up over your pant cuffs too. Please see the public health fact sheets for more information available in your PCV handbook and on the PCV training class website. Be on the lookout for poison ivy and sumac, another advantage of wearing long pants and sleeves. Wear plenty of sunscreen or cover up to prevent sunburns. Watch your footing and go slowly. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Also, if you are in a rocky area, be aware of the possibility of encountering a snake. Timber rattlesnakes and copperheads, though rare, do exist in southern New England. If you are allergic to bees or other stinging insects, make sure you have an, your Anna kit or EpiPen with you and that the other members of your survey are aware that you are allergic and may need assistance. Always bring a small first aid kit. Best to be ready if an injury happens. Bring plenty of water. Dehydration and field headaches are no fun. Do not go into the field alone, if possible. It is safer to have someone with you in case you get into a little bit of trouble. Always let someone know you are going into the field and let them know when you expect to return. Please be conscientious about disclosing information about rare plant locations. Never go into the field without your field forms, maps, and a compass. Leave yourself plenty of time to get out of the area in daylight and know the weather before you head out. Bring a cell phone if you have one. If you become tired, rest or turn back. Most accidents occur when people are tired and not paying close attention. Tips for other things you might want to have in your field pack are in the PCB handbook. Please take time to review it and understand what you need to do to be prepared to enter the field. Thanks again for watching. As always, if you have any questions or need something in the PCV program or guidelines clarified, please feel free to contact me.